Today we're going to talk about LS4 engine control, the electronics behind it, some of the differences between the generations. Uh, so we're going to start with the early LS4, which is 2005 to 2006. Those motors were 24 tooth reluctor on the crank and one pull on the camshaft sprocket. They used an E40 engine controller, which is the same that's found in the LS2s. And this controller is specific to the 24 tooth reluctor cranks. 2007 to 2009 had a 58 tooth reluctor on the crank and it had a four pole camshaft sprocket. That controller was an E67, which is specific to 58 tooth reluctors. Now, while these two controllers look very similar, they're not interchangeable. They're specific to the crank reluctor. They have similar operation. The operating systems are similar. They have similar enhancements. If you're trying to turbo it, you can go two and a half bar on both of these, um, but they are not interchangeable. You cannot run a first generation motor with a second generation PCM and vice versa. Now, these are also just engine controllers. They have no transmission control built into them. The transmission side of both LS4s, uh, you know, regardless of generation, is the T42. So the T42 is the same from the beginning to end of production. It's the same connector, same pinout, same OS. So this component is interchangeable. There's no difference between the first gen and the second gen. You can grab those from any donor car you want. The LS4 only came with a 4T65, so that's all that's going to be loaded on here. You're going to have the correct OS no matter what year you grab them from. Now, regardless of whether you have a first or second gen, you are limited to drive-by-wire if you stick with either one of these PCMs. Neither one of these have an IAC driver built in. And um, along with the PCMs being different, the corresponding throttle bodies also have a different pinout. Uh, the first generation has a eight pin connector. Second generation has a six pin connector. Now you're not stuck with these throttle bodies. You can rewire either one of these for like a 90 millimeter drive by wire. If you wanted to do like an LS2 intake swap or a trailblazer SS, but um, you know, the wiring is going to be specific to the controller that you're using. Now, this is what the LS4 came with from the factory but it's not your only OEM GM option. 58 tooth and newer, you also can use the E38 PCM, which is very similar. Um, you know, I, I'm not a tuner, so I'm not gonna sit here and pretend that I know every nuance between the two. Um, from what I've read in the tuners I speak to, I believe the E67 is the better choice. So if you're grabbing something from the junkyard, and it has this controller and you have a full harness to start with, um, this might be a better OEM solution for your 58 tooth crank reluctor. Uh, but if you have an early generation LS4, I strongly recommend you ditch the E40 because they're very problematic and go with like a P59. Um, these controllers are bulletproof. They're way easier to tune in my opinion. Uh, you can do a three bar enhancement that's VE based. It's not virtual VE, it's super simple. You can do flex fuel with these. Um, you can get an IAC driver on some P59 so that you can control a drive-by cable throttle body, which again, in my experience, is much easier to tune than drive-by wire. So in my opinion, if you're doing a swap, I would look for a first generation LS4 and I would pair it up with a P59 or an 0411 PCM. I think you'll have a much easier time getting it in, getting it up and running, and getting a base tune in it if you're doing it yourself. So th that's another thing to consider. If you're going to be tuning this swap yourself and you have to build the harness, you really need to weigh your options. Um, by the time you strip the engine harness down, eliminate all the emissions crap if it's for like a race-oriented vehicle, um, buy HP tuners or EFI Live, fumble around the software and try to learn it and then get your vehicle up and running. I mean, how much money are you really saving versus going with a standalone? Um, something to definitely consider regardless of which generation you're running would be the new Holly systems, those terminators. From what I've seen, those things are killer and you can't beat the price point. Um, 
you know, very similar price to like what HP Tuners or EFI Live is going to cost you. Um, and it saves you a ton of time of learning all the different tabs and all the different tables that you're never even going to use. There's just so much overwhelming information with either one of those softwares. I just feel like for the average enthusiast using a brand new plug and play harness um, instead of 20 year old junkyard wiring and using a controller that can do closed loop fueling based off the feedback from a wideband oxygen sensor is so advantageous for the price. So, you know, this just kind of sums up the very, very basic differences. We're just kind of scratching the surface, but it definitely gives you things to consider when you're at the junkyard looking for a motor for your swap. Um, if you're staying factory GM controllers, in my opinion, you're much more limited with the 58.2 stuff. So I would be on the hunt for a first gen LS4. And they seem to be a lot cheaper as well. If you jump on like uh, carpart.com and you search your local salvage yards, it seems like the first gen stuff, you know, you could pick up nationwide for, I don't know, four to $800. And it seems like as soon as you get into the newer motors, which the only difference is the crank and cam correlation, um, those motors skyrocket in price. You know, I've seen them from $800 on the low side of things all the way up to like $1,800 for lower mileage examples. Um, but yeah, uh, that kind of sums things up. Uh, the pedals are interchangeable between the two generations. That's another thing. If you want to grab the drive-by-wire pedal from any W body, it's the same pinout whether it's early or late. And, um, you know, the difference, again, is like I already showed you up at the throttle body. It's just one other thing I wanted to add to this. Um, but, yeah, that kind of breaks it down. All your other sensors are standard LS-based sensors. Uh, fuel injectors are... LS3 height EV6 connector regardless of generation um, I guess that would really only matter if you're sticking with the stock LS4 intake manifold which I'm sure most of you wouldn't if you're watching this video and you're swapping it chances are you're going to be putting an LS2 or fast or a Holly high ram or something on there engine coolant temperature engine oil pressure sender all those are the same as every other LS your cam sensor is the same uh crank sensor is the same appropriate for generation you know you've got the black crank sensor for early and you've got the gray crank sensor for uh later model motors but other than that everything's a plug and play affair the engine wiring routing is the same as it is for any other ls so if you bought a holly terminator or any other standalone with a plug and play harness the routing is going to be very similar you won't have to really make too many adjustments so I hope this answers some of your questions about um, the engine management side of things. Again, it's very, very cut and dry. <laughs> um, I will put a couple links in the description to uh, the Holly system. That's definitely something that I think a lot of you should consider. And also uh, lt1swap.com or .net. I'll have to look it up and put it in the description as well. ton of great information on all of these controllers and pinouts um, for you guys at home that are doing swaps. If you're putting this in a Fiero or a Honda or you know doing something pretty crazy with it, you don't even need to worry about the W body wiring. Just go to LT1 swap and start with his pinouts uh, based on the controller that you're going to use. So I hope you find this information useful. If you've got some questions, drop them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them as quickly as possible. Thanks so much.